I heard about it at 6.30 yesterday morning. Uh, an unnamed faculty member from UC Davis called to give me the, the news and it was, um, it was an incredible feeling uh, to receive that call and then to have about 10 calls from other members uh, also who are in Washington uh, attending the, the annual meeting uh, to transmit their congratulations and it's, it's just uh, an incredible honor. Yeah, the research that was honored by the Academy actually started here at UC Davis uh, more than 30 years ago when I came as a graduate student. And one of the questions that we were asking in those days was what was the role of a complex of genes called the major histocompatibility complex in resistance and susceptibility to infectious diseases. And so um, being here at UC Davis, we were around a fantastic group of people who had worked with viruses that caused leukemias in animals. And, um, and one of those uh, viruses uh, that was actually in, discovered uh, by one of the uh, members of the faculty, Gordon Thielen at that time, was the bovine leukemia virus. So we began to look at the role of the bovine major histocompatibility complex in resistance and susceptibility to the progression of disease caused by this uh, retrovirus called bovine leukemia virus. And that's where the work started. We, we did make uh, discoveries that led to the development of a genetic test, a test that could distinguish animals that were resistant or susceptible to, uh, to this virus. This virus causes a tremendous economic impact uh, in the dairy industry. What we discovered while we were at Illinois is that the subclinical stages of the disease also caused a huge economic impact to the dairy industry. And so if we could identify animals that submitted the resistance alleles, the animals could become infected, but they would never develop any signs of the disease. That uh, went on to have very important implications in HIV research at the time because they were found uh, uh, asymptomatic carriers of human immunodeficiency viruses. People would get infected, but they'd never develop the disease. The genome sequence was completed in 2003. And that allowed us to make very, very fine comparisons of the organization of the genomes of, 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 um, of different mammalian species. And that led to an entirely new interdisciplinary uh, approach toward looking at uh, comparative genome organization that involved uh, geneticists, computer scientists, informaticians, and people who really understood individual traits uh, very, very well. Those experiences, those uh, experiences in working in large teams of people uh, really got me uh, thinking that um, there must be many problems uh, across biology that required a similar approach where you know genomics is really a tool it's not an end it provides you a series of tools to do biology in general evolution is one part you know there medicine is another part there are many applications of genomics and so um, at Illinois we put together an entire institute was based on using genomics as a, as a tool to address major questions in biology. So that model was extremely important because when I came to the University of California at Davis we had to, I adopted that model to our own local conditions and now the program that we call RISE, Research Investments in Science and Engineering, uh, which is part of the Interdisciplinary Frontiers program, which we designed in the Office of Research, really took on those years of experience in building the Institute for Genomic Biology and really what it takes to get people to come out of their silos and to get administrators, department chairs and heads and deans to want to have their faculty participate in solving problems that are beyond the boundaries of their traditional academic disciplines. And that has been, you know, really exciting and that's what I've been able to to, to bring here to UC Davis. Well, Davis is a unique place. There's such a long history of collaboration here uh, that it is the logical next step to try and build things up beyond the one investigator, two investigator, three investigator, small collaborations to organize research in such a way that they're competitive for large-scale funding for, from NSF, DOE, NIH. Uh, if you have uh, a great technology transfer operation, but you have no technology to transfer, you're really not going to make much of an impact on society. And so the RISE programs are investments at the base of that pyramid, right? And so we're creating the programs that will create the new technologies for the future, which will go on to solve problems of major societal uh, and scientific uh, importance. But at the same time, 
if you've got all that new technology being generated but you don't have any way of transferring it you're in a, in a, in a very bad position and so the office of research now has uh, undergone a reorganization in the last year uh, since I've been here to to identify best processes best practices and best processes that we can implement for our campus as a service to the faculty and allowing them to take their ideas from conception to the marketplace